Okay. Hello, everybody. It is Stephanie and Stephen for the next edition, session two of our So Along. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. And I <laughs> want to say right from the onset, none of this is Stephanie's fault. This is mine. All mine. Uh -oh. I no, warned it's you. It's nobody's fault. It, the pattern was, it is a beginner pattern, but it is not written for a beginner. So I'll just say that. No. <laughs> Yeah, but we're going, but don't worry, don't anybody despair here because we will get everything settled out. You don't have to worry about anything. So let's see, who have we got? Diane and Katie Crafts and uh, Balloonist 2002. Um, oh, she's listening while on her way to a quilt class. Okay. Oh, good morning, Mona. Have fun today. Yeah. Oh, is that Mona? That's Mona. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh Mary Ann is here. Fabric Crafts by DJ. Oh, and this is her first sew along. Okay, well, great. Awesome. Hopefully you saw the replay from last week. Um, Nancy's here. Tracy is here. Priscilla. <laughs> Heidi. Ron is here. Um, Am is here. Hi, Am. Am's all the way from hey, Taiwan. Em. Yeah. Uh, Karen Campbell's here. Hi, Karen. Uh, did I say Nancy? I think I did. Yep. Yep. I got Nancy. March Ann's here. She got all her fabrics cut correctly after screwing up twice. Okay, glad, <laughs> glad to see March. Well, I'm not glad that you screwed up, but I'm glad to see I'm not the only screw up. Oh, Adam's here. Hi, Adam. Hey, Adam. And Pamela's here. So great. So lots of people here. And Moldy Lasagna is here. Good morning. Nice and, to see everybody. And Deanne is here too. So I'm sure more people will be joining us as we go along here. Uh, oh, T Wheels is here. Um, okay, so how shall we begin? <laughs> <laughs> now you can see behind Stephanie, she's already been working ahead here, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. So let's jump right into what I consider to be the elephant in the room. Lights and dark fabrics. Okay, it seemed so simple when I read the pattern. This many lights, this many darks. Could it be any easier? Not really, <laughs> but here's the problem. Not all lights and darks are created equally. Right. If for this stars, like you can see behind Stephanie how her stars are popping out. Um, mine did not. Uh, you have to make sure you have strong contrast between your lights and your darks. In other words, your dark should be really dark. Your light should be really light. Otherwise, your your stars are going to kind of sink into the background with it. Is that, is that what you found, Stephanie? It is. And thankfully, actually, because of Stephen kind of doing this a little bit ahead to try it out, he gave me some tips that helped me decide on my fabric. Because if you guys remember... I had two different fabrics. I had this purple and green fabric, and then I had the other fabric, which was more muted tones. And because of what he did and what I saw with his, how they the stars weren't popping, it made me decide on this fabric because I was actually leaning the other way. But then Stephen's like, no, 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 you have to have a lot of contrast. And the other fabrics didn't have a lot of contrast. So I'm really glad, actually. I know you said you made mistakes, but I'm glad you made those mistakes because then it helped me. So... So we don't want to, there's, there aren't any mistakes about the cutting. The cutting is very straightforward, so right. you don't have to worry about that. So if any of you are thinking now, oh my God, I've cut all my fabric, I'm not going to be using it. No, you will be able to. It, it I just wanted to make that point because that's yeah. what I found when I was using it. So, but before we go any further about that, Many of you sent us uh, examples of the fabrics you're going to use. So I'm going to try and switch my screen over so that we can actually see this. So just bear with me for one moment while I find this and hope that my technology works um, here. So, oops. Just... And while he's doing that, I'll just say hello to the people who have come in since we started. And there's several of you, the names have gone by really quickly, but I wanted to let you know that we see you. Okay, I think I have found it. So I'm just going to switch screens here so everybody else can see it. And I'm just going to pop this up better. Oh, perfect. 
And there we are. So I do have a list and I hope I've got it in the right order. So I, and I don't think I've missed anybody, but if I did, let us know. Uh, okay, so these are Pamela Colburn's uh, fabric choices here. So obviously she's working with a theme as we can see. So that looks great. And these fabrics are gonna work well, I think. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah I do. Like, I really like those. Yeah, I think that'll work really well. This is D Goldman's. And uh, again, we've gotten for the novelty prints, but I think this will be fun. I recognize that Corey Dantini fabric. <laughs> and Sue Norfleet has hers all laid out. Again, some novelty things in here, these little Parisian dancers kind of a thing. And I think that's going to look really fun. Um, this is Priscilla Lancaster's. Oh, lots of batiks. Yeah. Can't go wrong with batiks in my mind. I love batiks. Oh, yeah. Um, Shirley Young. And again, looks like, but now is that batiks? They look like batiks. I can't tell if those are batiks or prints. But either way, they're interesting. They're blues. <laughs> I yeah, like blues. I know. So. <laughs> First thing that tried me. Celie Rogers. Oh, nice variety. Yeah, really. That's going to look great. And oh, here we have the purple. Ooh, purple. Vibe. This is Kathleen Coville. Oh, yeah, very. Oh, and look at Kathleen's got it all. She's got everything marked out. She's got these little pin uh, markers, yeah. markers. That's cool. Well organized. This is small. I don't know if I can, you know, I can't blow it up any further, but this is uh, Faith Malarkey Hepler's. That looks select. like the teeps too, no? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, I can't really blow it up. I, I should have been able to, but there's this thing on Zoom that's over top of where I need to blow it up. So, oh. <laughs> well, I wonder if I can do it if I write. No, that's not going to let me do it either. Okay, well, sorry about that. Um, now, the next three are all from the same person because she couldn't get them all into one shot. So these oh, are okay. Heidi Morrell, 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 Heidi Morrell. So this is her first section, her next, and her next. Oh, and wow. Okay. That's going to be bold. Uh, next to those grays and everything. That's oh, really yeah, that's awesome. going to look great. Yeah. And now Pam, Pam Nesler. Again, the blues. I love the blues. Oh, yeah, blues and yellows are always great contrast. Yep. And Marianne uh, Kushner. As hers here. Oh, so, okay. That is a brand new fabric line out called Bunny. Yeah, or okay. I found this on the web for a series oh. here, so check it out. <laughs> okay. I don't know why Siri just came on. That's Flower Farm. No that's problem. A, that's a nice line. <laughs> Okay, somehow it wanted to talk to me. <laughs> I, anyway, so those are the fabrics that uh, people sent me pictures of. So thank you for sending those. That gives us a really good uh, idea of what we could be doing, yeah. uh, you know, and everything like that. I mean, I don't think you can pick wrong fabrics for this. No, uh, no. So... I'm right. actually really excited by all those because they're all very different. And yeah. um, hopefully they'll all share their finished quilts with us so we can see what this looks like in all those different fabrics. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's great. Now, just before we go on here, I was just looking to see anybody new joined us. Uh, you were saying hello to everybody while I was yep. trying to get things set up. Um, anybody have any questions at this point? It looks like Dana came in. Hi, Dana. Hi, Pamela. Cheryl um, Curley came in and Kathleen Coville came in. Oh, okay, great. And Dana's here. Did you say Dana? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, it looks like Nancy Levager has, she says, what are your block sizes, Steph? Okay, so um, these blocks, what, if you look at it as a single star instead of like across the whole project, each star, which we're going to get to and talk about, um, quadrant, is 36 inches wide. So my pieces are, my half square triangles, I trimmed down to nine and a half, and my solid squares are nine and a half inches each. And so nothing has changed in that in the pattern. That's what the pattern calls for. Right. That's what the pattern okay. calls for. I did exactly what the pattern said. I just kind of put them in my own way. Instead of doing it row by row, I was looking at it as a star, which Stephen's going to address. So. Yeah. So 
what I'm what I want to talk about right now is about the basic pattern because we have discovered something, and so I'm just going to uh, throw it up here in a second on the screen for you because there are several versions we have discovered of this pattern. And just let me get this going here. Okay, come on, pull down. All right, why can't I do that? Okay. Yeah. Why is this not cooperating? Oh, there you go. Okay, well, you got a lot of other garbage on your screen, but just look at the center of it <laughs> at the moment. So this is the Moonstar one. This is the front page of it. But Stephanie, what, you discovered, how did you do this? You discovered there was a revised edition. Well, actually, um, Mona, a balloonist that's here in the chat, she sent it to me and she said, hey, I couldn't download this from the link that we had. She's like, but I went to Andover's website who makes um edita sitar's fabric and she's like this is a, a an updated version she sent it to me so thank you for that and it is definitely a much clearer <laughs> easier to read version <laughs> and here's what we're talking about yeah remember that gray box before talking about blocks and things well they have updated that they're still using their fabrics that's why you have the numbers here on the side but if you look at this they're talking about each of the fabrics what to cut them um, so that makes it a little bit clearer and a little bit more detailed. And then it shows you a diagram of what each block will look like with your colors. So the problem with the other one was they just said light and dark. But when you lay, start laying this out, uh, you've got to lay it out in a certain order with your light and darks in order to see the stars. And if you're using different fabrics, like most of us are, then I think this chart will help make things a little bit clearer uh, for you, keep you more on track. So, you know, you can label your fabrics A through to, what do they got, G or S, whatever. Uh, yeah, they go up to T yeah. Yeah. on that. So you can lay them all out, label them that way, and this is going to help. And then, um, then they show you here. Well, basically, they still kept that pretty much the same. They're just talking about the units. Well, they've got, no, no, it matches up with this. They're caught what the units are, and they've got a number now beside them. Right. Which makes things just a little clearer. Yeah. Um, so that's the newest version of the pattern, and it is in the show notes. If you want that copy, there's a link for that, and it's free, of course, and you can download it. Um, the other thing, too, then to talk about is something that I created and that uh, Stephanie created. And I'm going to go over here to show you. I actually went into electric quilt because I was really getting confused. Um, how come it says my screen sharing is paused? Yeah. yeah. Can you see? No, you guys aren't seeing I still that. see the pattern up. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why it wants to pause on this. Oh, okay. Let me go. No, I didn't want to do that. What? Okay, just a sec. <laughs> this is so much there you fun. Go. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's us and okay. So you know you're seeing my diagram? Not yet. No. Okay. I think they can see it on YouTube, just not here on Zoom yet. Oh, okay. Uh yeah. now I have to find it. Where to go? Come back to me. <laughs> When I can get rid of. Oh. Good morning to everybody who just came in. As I confuse everybody to death. <laughs> okay. For some reason that went and disappeared on me. So let me just call it back up. Karen Campbell said, I don't have a picture, but I'm using Lori Holt fabrics. Well, that'll be nice. Yeah, that'll be Holt very nice. Always nice. Okay, and Priscilla right. said, I may change my dark points to a different light, maybe a solid. A different color to go with the dark. Oh, yeah. All right. Go back to here. Go back up to here. Um, go here. Sure. Good morning, Sly. You're not late. We're just getting started. <laughs> okay. It should be on there everybody. You go. Yep, I see yeah. it. And it should come back up and you'll see it. I'm watching on my iPad here to see what you guys see. Okay. Okay, it should. There. Yep, there we go. Everybody's got it. Okay, let me move yep. this 
far out of the way. Okay, so what I did was I went into electric quilt and I redrew the pattern and to make it a little clearer. Now, this is how my mind works. I sound like Jenny Doan. This is what I see. <laughs> Instead of it row by row, I saw it as four large blocks. And so those are my stars. And if you notice, so I've drawn this out and a copy of this is in PDF format and there's a link to downloading it to your computer if you want this. Um, so I've put it into four, quad into four quadrants, large block one, large block two, three, four. And so they're essentially the same, except you'll notice these blocks that have a uh, asterisk in them. That block is special because it makes this center design. So you might think, and this is what I thought when I looked at the original diagram, I didn't really notice that very well. And I thought, okay, well, there's a solid block here. There'll be a solid block here, easy. All of them would be solid blocks. And yes, you could do it that way, except what's going to happen is this is all going to be one big block of color and that's a big block. So this block here, for example, goes this way, it's a half square triangle, and this way. And I suggest you lay your pieces out on a design board or on a uh, on a rug or something on the floor to get a sense of how this works. Because once you understand that, and I think this makes it a little clearer, you'll have no problem figuring out where everything goes. But that original diagram is still very confusing. Now, Stephanie did something, and I'm just gonna go to Stephanie. Now, question for you while you're doing that. Somebody yeah. said, I like Stephen's diagram. Is there a way we can print that? Yes. it's There's a link in the show notes. It's on my Google Drive. You will have access to that. And you just click on it and you can download it to your system and print it out. It's a PDF okay. file. So uh, it's either PDF or JPEG. I forget which one I made it into. Um, but uh, it either way, you'll be able to get a copy of it, download it, no problem. Now, Stephanie's... And I'm just going to get us back into screen share. And Diane came in and she said she's using two layer cakes by AGF called Lilliput. Lilliput. I love the frogs. Awesome. Okay, great. So here we go. Stephanie colorized hers. So do you want to talk about this, Stephanie? Yeah. So I actually pulled the fabric swatches from, this is a Moda fabric line that I'm using. So I pulled the fabric swatches from there and I put it in the quilt top. So it's essentially what Steven just showed you, the quilt broken into these four quadrants, these four stars, rather than doing it row by row. Because once Steven showed me his diagram, I was like, oh, ding, that makes so much more sense than doing it row by row, in my opinion. I felt like breaking it out like this was genius of him to do. And so I went ahead and did the same thing and colored it so you guys could see it colored. And then I put the the quadrant lines too. So you can see very clearly the blocks where they come together in the center, how they need that extra, that that piece is the only one different of, of the four corners of each star. Now, if you happen to have electric quilt, you could do the same thing if you know how to use electric quilt. Uh, but if you don't, if you print out a couple of copies of my diagram and take some colored pencils that are close to the colors you're yes. using, color it in and see exactly you know what get a sense of where your colors are going to be when you put the half square triangles together so that yeah. might be a, a, a help for you as uh well um with it that's actually a brilliant idea to color it in yeah um so what are people any questions here um no but um lots of people are saying like the divided quadrant makes more sense you know that kind of thing so yeah and the other reason why I like the divided quadrant system is when it comes time to, uh, spoiler alert, we both of us have worked a little bit ahead. Um, <laughs> I've already sewn one of the quadrants together because that's how I intend to do it. The instructions tell you to do it row by row, which is fine. You can do it row by row. But what I find is you're going to be dealing with eight blocks in a row and it's going to hang, depending on how your sewing machine is set up, it's going to hang over the edge. And although it's not that heavy, it's still going to pull on it. And that's when I find for me anyways, that's when I can uh, start making a crooked quarter seam allowance. Yeah. So working with four at a time in a row, I find just a little easier. Plus, I'm getting a better sense of what the blocks are going to look like. Yeah, when I no, I agree. Through. I think it's easier to match up the points per block 
and then put the blocks together, I think your quilt is going to come out a lot better. And uh, so, yeah, so anyways, we're hoping that's going to make things a little easier uh, with it all. Yeah. So that takes me to then I want to explain how all of this came about. Because, you know, I said originally I was going to do this with five inch uh, blocks. And so that means, first of all, I had to double the number. And I think I gave a number in our last uh, video. Let me just make my screen a little bigger here. I think I, I told you what the sizes were uh, or how many I was going to make. I was wrong. <laughs> because I forgot to take into, I took in consideration with, so with five inch blocks, and I hope I don't confuse anybody, but I know there's a couple of people told me already they're going to do five inch blocks. If you do five inch blocks, you need four stars, large stars across instead of two. And you'll need four down to make it the size of 72 inches by 72 inches, which is the finished size of the quilt. Okay. I forgot to take in consideration I had length as well. So the new measurements are, I think I told you, you need it 48, four and a half inch squares. Those are the solid pieces. And that one, I was right. That didn't change for some reason. But you will need 104 5-inch light squares and 104 5-inch dark squares Ooh. to make your half square triangle. So there's 208 half square triangles. <laughs> that is a lot <laughs> of trimming. <laughs> that might discourage you, okay? Um, the other thing that might be a bit of a discouraging factor, I thought about this later, is a lot more seams. And so when you go to quilt this, you know, you, you want to keep your seams really flat yeah. on that. So if you're using a long arm or even if you're doing it domestic, you know, again, it could look really nice. But here's the kicker. All right. So I started doing this. <laughs> I put the, the, the half square triangles all together and I started laying them out on the design wall and it's coming along. And then I look at it and go, you can't see my stars at all. And that's why we came up and talked about the contrast in light and dark. I didn't have yeah. enough contrast. Also with that many little teeny pieces, it was really easy to screw up which direction they had to go in. That's <laughs> the reason I made the diagram. So I have decided, no, I'm not doing five inch squares. I'm doing 10 inch and I got my fabric for that and everything and I'm working with that and it's all working out fine. But now you're going to say, but what a waste. You have all those five inch no, it's not. I'm going to show you why it is not a waste. Yeah. Uh, because I've actually made uh, another quilt. And that's not the one I want to go to. I want to go here. And so real quick while you're finding that, somebody asked or said, Steve in Google Drive asked to send a request for access. I. Uh, you should have access to it. I set it up, but okay, just hold back on that. Then I, I can't do it now, but afterwards I'll go in and check out what the problem is. Because if you've got the link, you should have had access to it, but I, I will correct that. Okay. So everybody hold off on that. I'm just making a note that and I then Mary B said, could you make this with charm squares? And that's what um, Steve yes. was talking about now. So yeah. Um, let's see here. And then I'll answer this question while you're looking for that too. Diana Corday said, so are the corner are the corner solid blocks rather than a half square triangle blocks? Um, so it depends. If you're using the same solid background through the whole quilt, yes. I would make it a solid nine and a half inch square if you're doing the size that I am block. If you're using uh, like scrappy background where you're using lots of different um, background, combinations you can then you would do half square triangles but I chose just to use the tone on tone background from this fabric line so I did nine and a half inch squares for um my background okay in the um I got a screen share here so and this is where the patterns vary the very first pattern we had showed in the diagram where you put it together solid squares but then in the new pattern it has half square triangles for the corners so um, whichever way you want to do it is fine, but if you're using one solid background, you don't have to make that a half square triangle. That's just more work for you. Okay, what's going on here? I'm trying to 
I mean, I know you guys can see that, but that's not what I want you to see yet because it's, Stephanie's recording this for replay and you're not going to, the way I'm going through this, why did I lose my... Pamela said, I'm going with six inch blocks. I have a specific area this piece will be going. Awesome. Okay, why is this giving me a hard time? Oh, wait, I am sharing. It's on the bottom. Yep, oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can see your desktop now. Yeah. Okay. And move you guys out of the way. Okay. So here you go, people. Um, this is my quilt with the five inch squares. Now, you're going to notice something about this. You don't see the stars because I changed it. I changed the order of everything. I made this a completely different quilt using what I had already cut. And um, I call it hidden stars. <laughs> <laughs> Because you can't really, you can see them. There are some stars here. There's a star up in here. But this gives you a good idea of, too, of, you know, the contrast between light and darks, how they're used, whether or not you can see it. So this is uh, this is actually symmetrical in the way I've placed blocks, if you were to study it. And then I added three borders to it in various sizes. But I used, this I got the idea from Stephanie. When I saw you show those fabrics that you were mm -hmm. using, I saw that green pop on the uh, purple. That's why I use that there. So this is um, done, uh, except for, of course, quilting it and binding it. And when I get that done, I'll show it to you. But you see, it's not a waste. I'm getting two quilts out of this so long. <laughs> here, so. so this is your five inch side, just to, size, yeah. Just to clarify. Yeah, this was the five inch uh, squares. Okay, so... Let me just get us here in full screen mode. All right. So any questions at this point? Do you see anything, Stephanie? Um, nope. I haven't seen any new ones come in. We've already answered. Yeah. Oh, Pamela says she's going with six inch blocks, yep. which is fine. You can alter the size of them if you're comfortable with that, by all means. Now, the next thing we wanted to really talk about um, was... I think we talked about that there is a diff another pattern. Just for clarification, I don't know how this happened, but there were a couple of people who got Moonstar Blue Sky, not Moonstar Stargazer, which is the one we gave you the link for. And I'm speaking to you, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you are, dear. <laughs> but this is how I found out, because Dana said that she had this other one. And I thought, well, how did you get that? It's very similar, just uses a different colorway, but it does have a couple of different instructions in it just for the layout of the blocks. Um, you can use it if you want to. Uh, it's on Laundry Basket Quilt's site, but the link that we gave you is the one that we are using, and plus we've got the revised issue now, and that's all in the show notes. Okay, so strongly suggest that you download that one since, you know, if you run into a problem, we want to be on the same page. Yeah. So it's Okay. So, five people have said the lime green is a nice contrast in your quilt. Yeah, it makes things pop, I think, yeah. uh, with it as well. Okay, so I do have a short little video showing you how to make half square triangles or how I make them. Um, now, let's just take a, a little vote here. I don't want to waste anybody's time. If everybody's comfortable with making half square triangles, um, then yeah, I don't need to show this video. Uh, but if you want to see it, I can show it to you. It runs about five to six minutes long. So let's see in the comments what people would like me to do. Okay. So put in the comments now if you want him to show it or not or, or no. And my feelings won't be hurt if you don't want to see it. That's fine. <laughs> you all may be half square triangle queens and don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh so. Anybody saying anything yet? Not yet. So it's like, uh, Diane says she'd like to see it. I'd like to see. Okay. I'd like to see it. Okay. Sly okay. says, all right, we will show it. Just yep. give me a second to get the technology. I know quilt. we do have several newer quilters. So yeah. Um, Cheryl said, show it. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'm going to Tracy show it. Tracy said, I'd like to see it. All right. Great. And blow it up. And here we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I make half square triangles. So I have 
two pieces of fabric. These are five inch squares. One's a pre cut, and one is a batik that I cut as a five inch square because I didn't have any more in a charm pack. Okay, so I'm and I'm going to put the one on top of the other so that right sides are together. Now, in the case of the batik, many times with batiks, there is not a right or a wrong side, which makes life sometimes a little easier. But if you're doing this with uh, two pieces of fabric that do have a right and a wrong side, then you want to put the two right sides together. And then you want to take a ruler and you're going to want to draw a line diagonally from one point to the other. And I am to have a little larger ruler for this. And I'm doing this at my sewing machine as opposed to at my cutting mat. Um, so this is a little bit awkward, but I'm doing this so I can get it in the shot for you. So from one corner to the diagonal opposite corner, you take my pencil or whatever marking tool you wish to use. And because this is on the wrong side of the fabric, it doesn't matter. No one's going to see it. So you can use whatever you want. Okay. So now I have a pencil line from one diagonal corner to the other. So I'm going to put this under my needle. I have my quarter inch foot in the machine. And I hope I'm threaded. Uh, no, I'm not. Let me thread. Okay. It helps if you're threaded. Things work better. And now we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from one side of this drawn line. And as I said, I have my quarter inch foot in here. And away we go. So, as I said, I'm just stitching a quarter of an inch away from that drawn line. Okay. Just going to cut my thread, flip it around, and now I'm going to do the same thing, a quarter of an inch, so a quarter of an inch away from uh, that drawn line. So I have two lines of stitching, a quarter of an inch away, from that center line that ran from one diagonal point to the opposite diagonal point. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to my cutting mat and just cut this in half along that drawn line. Okay, so I have my square with the two stitch lines laying on my cutting mat. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut using my ruler and a rotary cutter, and I'm going to cut right along that drawn line. So now I have two triangles. Now, I want to make these four and a half inches. Um, there are uh, several ways I could square these up. I could take them over to my pressing station. I could press it open, just like so, and then take a square ruler, and I happen to have one that is four and a half inches, which is the size that I want, but any square ruler would work. Line it up, that diagonal line in the middle. And because there's very little I need to cut off, if I just go around the sides, two of the sides, so I know those are square, Flip it around 180 degrees, lay my ruler back down on it again, lining up that center dark line on the ruler with the center line of the two stitched pieces. And trim. And as I said, there was very little to trim off. So there I have my four and a half inch half square triangle, which is what they call in the pattern unit one. There's another way I can do this too. Without opening it up and pressing it, I have my triangle right here. Hope you can see that. And I have this ruler, which in this case it is called, it's from Cozy Quilt Designs, it's the Strip Tube Junior. There are different ones of these out, but they all essentially work the same way. So what I want to do, since I want a four and a half inch triangle, or 
half square triangle, I'm going to put the four and a half inch line, which on this ruler is the dotted line, and it's marked as four and a half, right along the stitched line, not the bottom of the square, but along the stitch line, making sure that it is relatively centered. There's going to be a little bit of overhang on either side, and we want that because that's what we're going to trim off. And then we'll take this, press it, and open it up. I'm just finger pressing this right now. But there you have your other half square triangle measuring four and a half inches on either side. Now you do have some dog ears on this. So you just take a pair of scissors and just clip those off. So there we have them. Those are our two half square triangles that measure four and a half inches. That's the unfinished measurement because once these get sewn into the quilt, we're going to lose um, a, a quarter of an inch on them. So they are basically going to come out to um, four inches. Okay, so that's what you do. And that's what's in instruction number one. Okay, so I hope that was clear for everybody. Very simple to do them. There are many methods for making half square triangles. Uh, you just find the one you like the best for that kind of thing. I'll let you in on a secret. The one I like the best is using my AccuQuilt to do it. <laughs> but, uh, I thought for this, I I would stick to the more conventional way. Yeah. Not everybody has an AccuQuilt. I know that. Am yeah. I rubbing it in? I am. No. <laughs> Okay, so does anybody at this point might have any questions? I don't see looking. any. They said it's very clear. Um, Nancy said you're a good teacher. Oh, thank you, Nancy. So, yeah. Okay, good. So that's pretty much it. We do have something more to show you, though. Uh, but as I said, in the show notes, you're going to find, it says for next week, have all your HSTs made, send a picture of one HST to me and my email links there. And I'll do the same thing as I did this time. I'll put them up as a little slideshow for the beginning of the next session. Um, and we also say for next week, we're going to talk then about sewing either the first row together, if you go that way, or sewing a unit together. Um, we're going to talk all about that. It's very straightforward. There's a couple of tips, though. Um, I've already, spoiler alert, I've made a little video showing you how I did the large unit. And uh, there's some tips about getting your points lined up so that you don't chop them off uh, when you're sewing it. And um, there's some other little tips here or reminders, really, of what we've already talked about. Uh, there's a link to the download for the updated version of the pattern, and I have that link for the diagram, but I will go in and double check that to make sure you can get access to it. So give me a few minutes after we're done here to update that information on uh, YouTube. It'll take, give it a half an hour, okay, or so, for those of you that are gun-ho to get that, okay. <laughs> Anything about this week? Before we go on to show them our Missouri Star Quilt Kit project? Um, no, uh, I just wanted to say that Diane said that helped me very much. Thank you. I know she's a newer quilter. Um, Pamela said, I vote for AccuQuilt too. <laughs> and uh, Diane said again, Stephen is my favorite overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am that. Some would say I'm... OC, okay, or possibly anal, anally retentive. But <laughs> so do you want them to have their first quadrant or first row done by next week? No, they don't have to have it done by next week. But here's spoiler alert, because Stephanie, Stephanie and I were talking about this dinner. This is not going to take as long as we thought uh, initially. So, I mean, if you're comfortable with working ahead, go for it. OK, it's up to you. You you manage your own time with this. But we I can tell you right now, we are not going to be doing this over a six week period. It's going to be a little shorter yeah. than that. 
uh, with Maybe it. Maybe six weeks with actually finishing the entire thing, including quilting and binding. Yeah. Because, yeah, I, I, Steve and I were talking earlier and I got up this morning and did all this this morning. So it's, I could get this done today. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so if you feel comfortable with doing that, by all means, go ahead if you wish. Okay. We're not going to hold you back uh, from yeah. it. Okay. So we've, we want to show you our uh, next Missouri Star project that we got Ooh. in our gift bag. So I'm going to let Stephanie start because I need to find my pictures. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so last week we showed you guys the wall hanging we did. And one of the other projects that we got in the Missouri Star um, Advent was a scissor keeper and a rotary cutter keeper. So both of us have made these and this is what mine look like. I just happened to have this fat quarter in my stash and it was perfect for these. So okay, if some... you op open this up, it has my scissors in it. Just a second, Stephanie. I think I cut us off the screen. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I see your pictures on the thing instead of... <laughs> no uh, I think thank you should be coming back here in a second. Okay. I don't know why I did. Uh, okay, I'm just watching here to see that... Steven, you cut me off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm horrible. It's all right. I need another screen. Here we go, where oh, we are. Okay, oh, yeah. here we go. Okay, so you guys heard me say what I said. So these are what they look like. This is the scissor keeper and it opens just like that. There's snap and then there's my scissors in there. And then here's the rotary cutter keeper. You open the top, there's like a little strap right there that you tuck it in and there's my rotary cutter. So very cool, very useful and handy. I love I love the fabric you picked for it. Thank you, thank That's you. so apropos. <laughs> So yeah, I, I like the, in, the inside one too. It's got little pins on yeah, it. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That so is very cool. cool. Yeah. Somebody was thinking when she made this. <laughs> so I'll show you mine. Well, I'll tell you that I had both of these fat quarters for a while in my stash and I didn't know what to use them for. So perfect. <laughs> so here are mine. I just grabbed, I think this is K-Facet fabric. And um, I just grabbed oh, yeah. it out of it. And uh, here's what they look like holding the stuff in it i love them um i said to walter do you want a set of these uh with it i got my usual grunt from him which means maybe maybe not i don't <laughs> know uh with it he'd probably lose them but i love them and they're in my uh bag that i take to uh retreats or to classes or whatever so um yeah i think that was a really neat project and the the little snaps are magnetic they came yeah. with it i love those because you know, on the outside, you don't see them. Yeah. Make a nice glass case, too. You know? Uh, you, well, that's what I was telling Stephen when we made one. these. This uh, rotary cutter holder looks like those glasses cases my grandfather used to keep one in his pocket all the time that looked just like that. So, yeah. yeah. So, that was a great little project. I really like that. Yeah. And fast. Really and fast. fast. They went together to super fast. Yeah. So, that was fun. Under an hour for both together, yeah. at yeah. least. So, Yeah. Okay, so I think that's everything for today. We'll just look here again. Anybody have any questions or Not comments they want to make? Before we say goodbye? Nope, you everybody looks like they're questions? okay. Put it in now before we go. Yeah. So um, I do suggest, like Stephen was saying, and like I have on the wall behind me, you lay all this out before you start sewing. I think it'll get very confusing if you don't lay it out, whether you lay it out by row or you lay it out by um, quadrant, like we're doing. Definitely lay it out and look at it before you start sewing it together. Yeah, that that's very true because that's what happened to me. I got lost uh, yeah. with it. And to be honest, that diagram that came with the original pattern we got, it doesn't print out that clearly because it's got shading it's more gray tone than color tone i think if they had different colors in it it would show up better and you'd see but the way it is yeah. it's very confusing so i'm glad that that revised issue uh of it really breaks it right down block by block uh yeah. for us okay, okay. so Nick i crochet or whatever said the moonstone link is not working for the new one the revised pattern oh oh um yeah, I just realized why they're not working for you people. You're jumping the gun. 
this hasn't this technically is not on YouTube yet. You can ah. see the links for us, but it's not actually active. Only the live part of what we're doing, not the links. So once we're finished here, it will go over onto YouTube. It'll take it half an hour or so to process, and then those links should become active. And I will double check them at that point in time too to make sure they are. But that's why you can't get access uh, right now. I that makes sense. That. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know yeah. uh, about that. Okay. So I think that's it for us today. Yeah. So everybody, go do your homework and good luck. <laughs> and don't it, forget to send us yeah. pictures and Stephen will show them again. So, yeah. Okay. So thanks everybody for joining us today and uh, we'll see you again real soon. Yeah. So bye bye for now. Have a great week. <laughs>